What's good YouTube? This is your boy Dr. ZZ. So you must be in medical school right now and thinking what can I do right now that can help me prepare for my PLAB in the future? Well, do not worry. I will tell you the exact things that you can do right now that can prepare you for success in your PLAB journey. Preparation can actually vary based on which year you are currently studying. If you are anywhere between first to third year of medical school, you are at a very early stage. At this stage, you need to learn all the basic subjects of medicine, such as anatomy, physiology, pharmacology, and really dive deep into the theory and learn everything about it. These basic subjects will be the foundation of your future medical career. Best thing you can do is get the standard books that are used by most of the international countries. For example, for physiology, it would be Gaynon's, for anatomy, it would be like the Frank Meta Atlas. So get all the standardized books in and really enjoy your time in learning the key concepts of medicine. If you're anywhere between third year to your fifth or sixth year, I believe you must have by now decent foundation built in yourself. At this point, you can move towards the clinical aspect of medicine and this is what will be tested during your PLAB exam. So a simple thing that you can do is you can subscribe to the question bank called Pass Medicine and start attending the questions over there. So sometimes when you're doing these Pass Medicine questions, some of these questions might come off as very hard and you might not know anything about them, but that is okay. First thing that you can do is you can guess your answer and if you get it right, then you can go ahead and study the topic in depth. For example, if the question is based around dermatomyositis and polymyositis and they have given you certain options and you have no clue anything about it, best thing would be to just guess the answer, see if you get it correct and then go ahead and study about dermatomyositis, polymyositis, what is the pathophysiology behind them, what is the management behind them. So what you're doing basically is by doing every single question, you're studying laterally which is actually building your knowledge it is actually building your clinical sense get the right books it's very important to get your hands on two very important books that I'm going to show it to you. Number one will be the Oxford Handbook of Clinical Medicine. Always make sure you get the latest edition and another book that you need to get your hands on to Oxford Handbook of Clinical Specialities. I will link these books in the description below so you can go ahead and check them out. These two books are the Bible of every single medical student. These two books are great reference book which is used by most medical students and FY1 doctors in the UK and they are in line with all the UK guidelines. So this is something you should always have in your backpack any given time. The next thing in line is you need to learn to become good at interpersonal skills. UK as a country places a lot of importance in how you communicate with patients. In fact, PLAP2 is mainly based on the communication skills and that is one of the key aspects that they look while you're doing the PLAP exam. We from Asian countries really need to learn this skill. One of my mentors who taught me for PLAP2 exams told me one thing. He told me that PLAP2 is a very easy exam to pass but it is very easy to fail. And the biggest reason for that is lack in communication skills. That is why certain people who do everything right during their PLAP 2 exams will end up failing. Because the prep time might be enough for them to learn the material for PLAP 2, but might not be enough to master communication skills. So we recommend you to start improving your communication skills as early as in med school. And since you guys are in med school right now, this will be the perfect time to get started. If you want to improve your communication skills today and don't know where to start, make sure you check out our interpersonal skill webinar. It's a two hour long webinar where we go and break down all the key concepts of what exactly interpersonal skills are and how exactly you need to communicate with patients. You might come across difficult issues like breaking bad news and child abuse and how to professionally and sensitively break these topics and discuss these with patients in a professional manner. Few candidates who took our webinar were really glad that they took because they understood what were the key mistakes they were doing while talking to patients and how they improved their communication skills which helped them smash their PLAP2 exams. If you want to get your hands on the webinar, make sure you find us on our Facebook page, Dr. Zizi, and send us a message saying, I want to get the interpersonal webinar and we will get back to you. The next thing is with the key steps that I go through with you in the webinar, it is very important that you put this into your practice regularly. What that means is whenever you're going for ward rounds, whenever you're going to see patients, always make sure you speak to the patients in that professional manner so that you can naturalize communicating with patients. Initially, it will be a little bit difficult for you to talk to patients in that manner. But over time, once you practice, you will become quite natural at it. When the time comes for you to do your PLAP2 exam, you will ace it because you're already good at communication. As a doctor in the UK, you will have to do all the basic ward procedures. So make sure while you're in medical school to learn it properly. Make sure you learn to do blood drawing, ABGs, NG tube insertions, urinary catheterizations, cannula insertions, to name a few. A good resource that I think might be helpful to you is to check out the Geeky Medics YouTube channel because they go ahead and explain all these basic procedures in a very fun format. I think you definitely need to check them out. 
The most important thing would be get all the material in order. For example, get the 1700 question bank. Make sure you join all the important Facebook groups such as Dr. Khalid's 1700 Facebook group, Club 1 group, Club 2 groups. I'll put the link in the description below. Where there is a community of people who are all going through the same boat as you are. So you guys can help each other out and improve your knowledge and skills that can help you in your club exams. If you have done all the things that I just said, then you can be reassured that you are in the right Track. Now just relax, make friends and enjoy your time in medical school. This will be the most memorable time in your life. While you're preparing for your future, make sure to enjoy your present as well because this time will never come back. So there you have it guys. I hope this video was helpful. Make sure you like, share and subscribe. This is your boy Dr. Zizi. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take it easy. Peace.